This video is going to look a little bit at similarity, parallel lines, and proportions that can be found therein. So let's go ahead and start with a triangle. Say we have this triangle, and another triangle was created within this triangle. And uh, the side on the further side and this side are parallel. Let's think about what we can know about these two triangles. I'm going to go ahead and label them so I can talk about the triangles a little bit better. Now, uh, let's start out by thinking about what we know about these two triangles. So first off, let's say we have angle, the angle located at C here. By the rules of parallel lines, we know that this corresponding angle is also the same. Now, let's look at the angle at B. Again, by parallel lines, we know that the corresponding angle up here is the same. Now, we know that angle A is angle A, the same in both triangles. So if we were to look at these two triangles separately, we have triangle A, E, D, and we have triangle A, B, C. Because they have angle, angle, angle in common, we can say that these two triangles are similar. So we can say that triangle A, E, D is similar to triangle A, B, C. Because we know they're similar, we know some kind of cool things about the sides of these two triangles. We know that they have a uh, ratio that is in common. So we know that side AE over side AB is the same as side AD over side AC. And that ratio is also similar for side DE over side CB. Now there's another cool uh, proportion that we can have between these and this is known as the triangle proportionality theorem. And uh, what this theorem says is that the short side, the relationship between these two sides and the relationship between these two sides is also related by a ratio. Now it's a different ratio I want to make that really important. It's a different ratio from the similarity ratio. However, it can help us find out things about these two triangles. So the triangle proportionality theorem says that side AE over EB, that little segment there, is the same ratio as AD over DC. We can use this special proportion that's different from the similarity, remember, we can use that special proportion to find out things about these triangles. And the only reason this works is because of those parallel lines. So let's go ahead and look at this. So we have these two triangles here. I'm going to start with that one right there. And uh, what we can say is there is a relationship between the ratio of these two sides and these two sides. So if I wanted to find LK, I could do that by setting up a proportion. I know that 6 over 4 is the same as 8 over whatever it is I'm trying to find. I'm going to call it x in this case. And we can go ahead and we can use cross products to figure out what side LK is. That's going to be my x. So when we use our cross products, we find our cross products. We have 6 times x is equal to... 4 times 8. We can divide both sides by 6 and we can find out what side LK is. So in this case when we do 32 over 6 we have 5.3 repeating which we can also write as an improper fraction. If we divide uh, 32 by 2 and we divide 6 by 2 we end up with 16 over 3. So we can side, say that side LK is 16 over 3. So we have another example here too, and we know that this side is 30. We know that this side is also 30. 
Now, if we're going to set up our proportion, we need to know x, y, and y, u. We have x, z, and z, v. If we're going to use our ratio, though, we actually have to find out what x, y equals. So if we know that the whole thing is 30, and we know that the uh, smaller part there, that u, that y, u, is 18, we know that x, y is 12. Now I'm ready to go ahead and set up my proportion if I wanted to find out what x, z was. So we know that 12 over 18 has the same ratio as x, what I'm trying to find, over 30. And we can go ahead and use our cross products to solve this. So we're going to number 18x equals 12 times 30, which is 360. Divide both sides by 18. And we end up with that missing side, side xz, is equal to 20. That's just applying the triangle proportionality theorem. Now, there's also a converse to this theorem, and this converse says that if the ratios are the same, then we can say that those lines are parallel. So in this case, we want to prove that QR is parallel to MN. If this were the case, the ratios of the sides would be the same. So that means that QM and MP and PN and RN are the sides that we're going to use. So it looks like in this case we know this whole thing is 9 and the smaller part is 2.7. So we would need to subtract in order to find out that other side before we can write a ratio. In this case it's 6.3. We have to do the same thing on the other side. We know that the whole thing is 10. We know the small part is 3, so that means this part is 7. So if these two things were parallel, we would know that 6.3 over 2.7 would have to equal 7 over 3. So you can go ahead and use your calculator to ver verify that. So 6.3 over 2.7 is going to give me a 2.3 repeating. And 7 over 3 also gets you 2.3 repeating. You can write that as an improper fraction if you want as well. Um, regardless, we know that these, t rate, uh, these numbers are the same, so we can say definitively that these two sides are parallel. So over here we have another example. We have a triangle, and we want to prove that AB is parallel to DE by the converse of the triangle proportionality uh, theorem. So for here, we need to know what those two long sides are going to be. So if we look, we have side AC and we have side BC. Right now I know the 20 and 15, but we have to know what the other two are. So let's say that we are given the fact that... So uh, let's say that AC is... 36, and let's say that BC is 27. So we have to find those uh, other two shorter segments. So if we know the whole thing is 36 and that one's 20, that means that this difference is 16. And we know the whole thing is 27 and that one's 15, that means the difference is 12. So if these two things were parallel, we would know that 16 over 20 was equal to 12 over 15. So you can simplify these two ratios or apply your uh, calculator to help you do that. And you would have 16 over 20, which is 0.8, 4 fifths. And we also have 12 over 15, which is also 0.8, or 4 fifths. So in this case, we can verify, we have verified by the converse of the triangle proportionality theorem that AB is in fact parallel to DE. 
Another cool thing we can look at um, involves having two transversals and more than two parallel lines. So let's say we have, I'm going to call it three parallel lines. We know that these are parallel. And we have two transversals cutting through these parallel lines. So we end up with a lot of smaller segments here. I'm going to call them A, B, C, and D. What we can know by the two transversal proportionality is that A over B is equal to C over D. We can use this to find out lengths of those segments that are missing in between um, the parallel lines that are given. As long as we have three or more parallel lines, this two transversal proportionality works. So I'm going to start here with this example on the left. We are given some information and we want to find out that missing segment, the length of the missing segment. So if we look over here, we know that the whole side is 14. We're given the 8, and so we're missing 6. Now we can go ahead and set up our ratios. We know that 6 over 8 is going to be equal to our missing amount. I'm going to call it x over 12. So now we can go ahead and use our cross products to solve this. 6 times 12 and 8 times x. So we end up with 8x equals 78. Two. Divide both sides by 8, and we can see that our missing part is 9. So that missing segment, that question mark, is equal to 9. Alright, now I'm going to do the one over here on the right. And this one's a little bit trickier before we can set up our proportion, because we can see that we have a side that's 7 plus 14x, and then that part is 22. So if we're going to find the missing part before we can set up our proportion, we're going to actually have to do some algebra. On the other side, this is actually not too bad because we know the whole thing is 35. That part is 25. So the smaller part is 10. All right, so let's go ahead and solve that algebra equation before we can go ahead and set up our ratios. So we know that 7 minus plus, sorry, 14x minus 22 is going to give us that missing side, that question mark there. So in this case, we have two combined like terms. So we're going to end up with 14x, and then 7 minus 22 is going to be negative 15. So that's this part right here, 14x minus 15. Now if we want to find x, we want to need to set up our ratios. So in this case, we're going to have 22 over 14x minus 15 is equal to 10 over 25. Now we can apply our cross products rule to solve for x. So we're going to end up with 140x minus 150 equals 22 times 25, which is 550. Add 150 to both sides, so you end up with 140x equals 700. And then divide both sides by 140 so that we can find x. And in that case, we end up with x equals 5. And again, we know x equals 5 based on what we used for our two transversal proportionality. So uh, where would this be applicable? Well, here we have a image that shows a map of some streets in New York City. And what we want to do is we want to find the length along Broadway between, um, let's say, 35th and 34th Street. So if I look at my image right here, that would be that distance right there. Now what's kind of cool about uh, New York City is it's based on a grid system. So all of these streets are actually parallel to each other. So we can go ahead and use our two transversals proportionality to find that missing amount. So if we set up our ratio, we're going to have 275 over um, the missing amount equals 240 over 250 because Broadway and Avenue of the Americas is um, Fifth Avenue actually um, 
they are both transversals through their parallel lines. So in order to solve this, we're going to have to apply our cross products. We're going to end up with 240x equals 275 times 250, which is 68,750. Then to finish this up, we can divide both sides by 240. And we end up with our missing distance to be approximately, I'm going to use approximately, uh, 286.46 feet. This is something that actually is used um, when you are trying to find those missing amounts. Um, it's particularly used a lot in perspective drawings and things by artists. We need to make sure that we are considering parallel lines and those cut transversals. It, it, it's very helpful when looking at perspective. So to recap all the ideas covered in this quick little video, we uh, looked at the triangle proportionality theorem, which looked at the relationship of the sides. So if we had two triangles, we know that x over y is equal to a over b. Notice how uh, those two are part of the same, similar, uh, same triangle, and these two are part of the other triangle, and in this case they are similar triangles. So you identify the common parts, first step, then you write the ratios, second step, and you can use cross products to solve. Can't in this case because I don't know what anything is. Now this same thing holds true for the two transversals. If we have at least three lines that we know to be parallel and two transversals cutting through those, we can also set up some proportions. So I'm going to label these again. We know that A over B is equal to C over D. And again, what we did was we found the common parts. A and C both resided between those two parallel lines. B and D both resided between the second set of parallel lines. Then we could write our ratios, and we can use cross products to solve. So you can see that proportionality plays a big role in the relationship between segments that can be found in between uh, parallel lines.